musket maintenance. For many reenactors, these two words mean the less fun side of the hobby. Though, while some despise it, still others look forward to it. Fun or not, taking good care of your musket is critical, not only to your experience on the field, but also to your safety and the safety of those around you. You're watching 10th TV, this is Private Zaslow, and today we're discussing how to clean your musket. This could be you. Choose your path in one of America's premier reenacting units, His Majesty's 10th Regiment of Foot. Visit redcoat.org. Welcome back. I'd like to preface this video by saying that everyone has their own unique methods of cleaning a musket. Not only between regiments, but within a regiment as well. Not one method is better than another, and it depends on the individual as to what works best for them. While I'll be displaying the method that I use to clean my musket, I'll do my best to discuss other methods as well, and you can make an informed decision as to which one works best for you. Please also note that some of the methods and products used in this video are not historically accurate. While well, the basic musket clean that I will be demonstrating, which is often used at events, will follow historical techniques. Some of the more advanced procedures, performed far less frequently and at home, use more modern products. These products and techniques help the tent maintain its high standard for our events, which not only include reenactments, but parades and ceremonies, which help pay for the regiment's operating expenses. We strongly recommend that you check out the 40th Regiment of Foot's YouTube page, where they detail a full musket clean using only historically accurate techniques and products. So let's get into it. I know this table looks intimidating, but don't be scared. In fact, I've displayed a lot of different products here, which often serve the same purpose. I will describe each, and you can make an informed decision as to which one works best for you. Furthermore, a lot of the products displayed here are not used for the basic musket clean. In this video, I will not only describe the basic clean, but also more advanced procedures, such as how to remove the barrel and care for the wood of your musket stock. The latter two are usually only done once a year, and the tools and products used for them are either usually borrowed or done free of charge for our members by our in-house musket expert, Lieutenant O'Shaughnessy. First, I will briefly detail all of the items on this table. I've tried to arrange it so that the most necessary items appear to my left, and become less necessary as they travel to my right. We will link the sites to purchase these items in the description below. If you would like to fast forward to the cleaning portion of the video, please skip to the time above. So first is a screwdriver or tri-tool. A tri-tool is a necessity for any reenactor, not only because they're incredibly helpful for on-field musket repairs, but historically, all soldiers were required to carry one. However, when uh, disassembling a musket, a screwdriver also does the job. Second is water. Necessary for removing the gunpowder in the barrel, I find that my canteen holds the most amount of water, leading to less trips to the faucet. Third is some form of drying product. After running water down your barrel, drying is necessary to prevent rust and corrosion. Patches, small rags, and paper towels all work. I will note, however, that the softer cotton patches here I have found to be a lot more absorbent than the thinner ones here. Also, if using paper towels, only use the most durable grade, or they can break off in the barrel, causing issues that have happened to me on multiple occasions. Next are the tools needed to hold your patches. I have three displayed here. Historically, soldiers would have used this tool here called a worm. It screws onto the end of a ramrod. The patches get hooked onto the worm. They are cheap and can be found at most sutler shops at reenactments or online. Note that for Japanese muskets, you will need an adapter to fit the worm to your ramrod. Here is an example of a cleaning kit. It features a worm-like tool on the end with four brass pieces that screw together, making it easily portable. The only noticeable advantages this has over a traditional worm is the handle on the end, which makes removing suction patches easier while making the cleaning process less demanding. I also feel the overall durability feels a lot stronger than a ramrod. Lastly is a modern rifle cleaning kit. These can be found at most major sporting goods stores or large department stores such as Walmart. Please note that because they're designed for modern weaponry, often you'll actually have to buy two of the same set in order to reach the desired length to clean your musket. 
It screws together similar to the brass set and the patch fits into this patch holder. While more flimsy than the brass set, it features a lot more accessories for half the price. Just to reiterate, all three of these make great options for cleaning a musket, but only one is necessary. The next key item is a vise. I have two examples here. This is a more period correct version. You can find them online or at some settler shops. This is a modern vice grip, which serves the same purpose. These can be found at your local hardware store. Vices compress the mainspring on your musket lock to avoid damaging it during dis and reassembly. Next, we have gun oil and bore treatment products. Rem oil and WD-40 are both great for helping remove and prevent rust. Bore treatment paste are great for maintaining the inner barrel. I generally use bore butter, but this one works as well. All of these are readily available at most department or sporting goods stores. The last item I would say is necessary to musket maintenance is steel wool. Many reenactors know that a humid night can lead to rust the next morning. Steel wool, especially combined with oil, is an absolute kryptonite to any rust you may find. I would recommend going with a finer grade wool to avoid unnecessary scratches. Single lot or lower is ideal. Steel wool can easily be found at all local hardware stores. Now moving on to polishing equipment. While not technically necessary for basic musket maintenance, polishing was expected of soldiers in the British Army and is a core part of the tense culture today. We have a saying, 81 buttons. This corresponds to the number of buttons on our uniform. Our founder, Vincent Kehoe, wanted every metal piece on our uniform to be polished, down to the last button, and thus the phrase was born. This is a standard the tenth continues to reinforce today. The tenth has a favorite polish called moss. I can speak to its worthiness as I've yet to find a better polish. You can find it in a metal tub like this, which has a thicker consistency or more of a paste found in plastic containers such as these. Please note that moss is very difficult to find in store and usually has to be ordered online. If no moss is available and you have to polish on the fly, most basic metal polishes work such as Brasso or Nixon here. They are often cheaper and more readily available, but I have noticed a significant sacrifice in quality with the other brands. When polishing, a rag or a paper towel does a great job. However, the next level up is the buffing wheel displayed here. This can get a close to perfect shine on a musket. The wire brush on the opposite side can be useful for removing uncooperative stains, but it's not recommended to use often due to the scratches it can create on the metal. Now moving on to the lesser used products. Some may not know this, but the barrel on a musket is actually removable. I remove my barrel at least once a year to clean out the inside of my stock and the underside of the barrel. But if a musket is exposed to a lot of water, it's generally a good idea to remove the barrel and allow the stock to dry out so the water doesn't get trapped in there, causing corrosion and rot. To remove a barrel, you need pin punches, which remove the pins holding the barrel in place. These can usually be found at a hardware store. My musket uses a 1 1 16th diameter punch, though others use a wider diameter, such as the 3 32nd displayed here. To use the punch, generally a hammer is required and a pair of needle nose pliers are used to pull the pins out. Lastly is musket stock maintenance. This is often overlooked, but is critical to the health of your musket. Without a properly protected musket, the wood can wear and eventually disintegrate and the exposure to water can lead to things like rot and even cracks in the barrel. I use linseed oil for this, which is available at most hardware stores. It can be applied using rags or paper towels or the applicators displayed here. So those are all the items that I would use for maintaining my musket. So now let's move on to the cleaning portion and we're gonna start off with just the basic clean. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the lock. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is flip your musket over, take your tri tool or screwdriver and start unscrewing these bolts on the back end. Also just note that usually this brass plate can come off as well, which I'll do, but people have lost these brass plates in the past because they didn't know that. All right, so with these two bolts out, your lock should just be able to come right out. Nope, I've got a hammer stall on here. I'll take that off. You can see that it has gotten a lot of use, a lot of uh, gunpowder residue that's still left in the pan. So now what we're gonna do is disassemble the lock. 
party. So I'm going to take my vise here, put it onto my mainspring, and start to tighten it. It doesn't have to be too tight, just tight enough to compress you can get the uh, compression of the mainspring. You can see how it's really starting to release that frizzin. So now that frizzin is going to be loose. Don't want to be too tight, but you want to be tight enough. So you can see now that frizzin is loose. All right, from there, I'm going to, again, take my try tool and just unscrew the mainspring. All right, and that should just come off as one piece. It's not the mainspring is removed. I can remove everything else without worrying about that. So I'll unscrew the flash guard here. Just a fun fact, these flash guards actually did not exist in the 18th century. They're a modern invention. They prevent the uh, flash that comes out of the pan from hitting the soldier next to you, but historically these actually did not exist. So I'm just gonna unscrew that. That screw will take off the flash guard and your frizzin. And then I can unscrew this piece as well. This just holds your uh, flint and lead in. And then some muskets, you can take the cock off the lock, but uh, for this one, you can't. But normally, if you want to do that, you would unscrew this screw. And mine, uh, you cannot take it off. All right, so we also have to get the powder out of the pan here. So I just use a little bit of steel wool, some oil, work that right out. Might take a few tries. Part of inspection is looking into the pan, so it's critical that you have no gunpowder in there. Alrighty, so you can see here there's no powder now in that pan, so that will pass inspection. Alrighty, so now we're going to uh, clean up the lock. So I'm first gonna check the inside. It actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna spray some oil in there, some rim oil, and maybe uh, rub it out with a rag. But uh, after long battles, the inside of the lock can actually get gummed up and uh, can cause issues on the inside of the lock. But this actually looks pretty good. All right, so then I'm just gonna take some uh, oil again here, take my rag, and try to work some of this powder off. I may need to end up using some, uh, some steel wool for some of the tougher things, but uh, I'll go with just some oil and a rag first. So I got a lot of it off. I'm gonna go uh, see if some polish might do the trick. Usually to open the moss tins, I'll use either the back end of a, uh, of a hammer or uh, just the try tool can do the job as well. Just a rag, a little bit of moss. And just work into the metal. There's still a little bit of residue on there. I'm thinking I'm gonna use some uh, steel wool. You can break the steel wool into really small pieces and just work a single area really well. So you, all right, so I'm gonna keep working at these little rough spots and I'll check in once I'm done. Alrighty, so now I've basically gotten all the rust off the lock and the components of the lock as well. Now we're gonna move on to polishing. All right, so pretty simple. I like to actually use paper towels for my polishing. I just feel they're uh, a little more absorbent, um, but some rags are uh, actually pretty good as well. With moss, less is more. Just dab a little bit on there. So you can see that the uh, lock here is already pretty well polished. Um, that's just because when I store my musket, I keep it oiled and I keep it in a musket sock uh, in a cool, dry environment. And basically that prevents that rust from becoming anything more than surface rust. So once I remove that rust, what's left is a, a pretty shiny musket lock. My musket lock isn't the shiniest, but uh, definitely is one of the better ones. You can see that that's, that's pretty shiny. I'll do the same on the, uh, the hammer here. Just looking for that shine. Again, 10th Regiment, big on polishing. A lot of regiments aren't going to be this strict, but uh, the 10th has always had a pretty high standard with the polishing, so. All right, so that's a good once over on the lock. Um, I probably will do about two more coats with that. Uh, we can go and polish some of the brass. This, 
And the brass is very rewarding to polish because it tarnishes pretty easily, but it also cleans up really easily as well and looks really nice after you're done. The tenth uh, has a saying that you should see your reflection in all your metal, especially your brass, because brass polishes so easily. Maybe do one more coat on that and uh, I'll clean up everything else, all the other pieces, the uh, flash guard here, and we'll check in when I'm done to put it all back together. Alrighty, so now I have a pretty clean and polished lock. You can see outside is pretty shiny. Inside doesn't really have too much residue in there. All the components cleaned, polished. You can see on the flash guard inside there's really negligible powder in there. Uh, polished the back plate as well. And we'll put that together tomorrow once, um, once we have the uh, finished musket stock as well. All right, so now to put it back together, it's just reversing what you did to begin with. So first what I like to do is just put on the frizzin here and my flash guard. That's gonna be the longer screw of the two. You took out two screws. Make sure that you keep those uh, in a safe spot. They're easy to lose. The shorter one goes to the mainspring. The longer one goes to the flash guard and the frizzin. All right, then just take your tri-tool, screw that in. All right, and the next thing I'll do is put the flash guard back on. So you can see that there's a little notch that goes in that notch right there. Let me fit the screw in and tighten that. Alrighty, and then just slowly loosen it. And now, your frozen is back to working again. And the last step is just to put back on your flint. So I'll just screw that on first. And stick the flint in there second. And tighten it up using the tri-tool. The tri-tool is very versatile, and if you need to change flints in battle, it's a needed tool. Alrighty, so now we have a fully clean lock. It's been polished. I'm just gonna spray the inside with oil, and I'll do a little once over on the outside as well. We're wiping it down with a rag. That's just gonna prevent more rust from uh, accumulating when it's in storage. There we go. So I generally use a little warm water, it doesn't have to be too hot, but I find that it helps, uh, helps to release whatever residue is at the bottom of the barrel. All right, so the first thing that I'll do is uh, pour the water down the barrel. And you're gonna see that the water will come out the touch hole and it'll be black. That is the residue that's getting disintegrated or dissolved into the water. really see how it's black. So generally I'll keep pouring until this water becomes clear. So after long battles it will uh, sometimes take a full canteen before the, uh, the water becomes clear. But now you can see it's a lot clearer than it was. Now it's pretty clear, this is to my liking. The next thing I'm gonna do is pour some water down the barrel and instead of letting it pour out of the touch hole, put my canteen down and cover the touch hole. Cover the barrel and shake. This is gonna get even more powder that may be stuck at the bottom. So I generally do this maybe half a dozen times, like half a dozen rotations here. Pour it out. I'll repeat the process. So 
each time you release the water, it should be a little clearer, generally. So that's pretty good, actually. I think I'll run it through one more time. All right, that should be clear. It is. So now that is uh, done with getting the water out of the barrel. Now we're going to move to drying the barrel. All right, so for this, I'm gonna be using patches. Uh, the first step is to take your worm and attach it to the end of your ramrod. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. And I actually like to use two patches at once. This is not something that everybody does, but I prefer to do it because I feel like I get a lot more coverage in the bottom of the barrel with two patches. So I'll kind of uh, make these into a diamond. I'm basically pressing the patch so that it gets hooked in by the spikes on the worm here. That should be good. It's on there nice and tight. You really don't want these falling off. Now, take my musket. Take this and just put it down the barrel. It's at the bottom, I'm gonna swirl it around a few times. here that's very dark basically it's gonna dry it in addition to pulling out more residue then what I'll do is I will fold over the patch over the top of the worm and this is gonna help get the base of the musket again twist and basically how I clean is I will keep running patches down until I get no dark stain on the patch at all. So same thing. Make sure those patches are on nice and tight. Run it down the barrel. Each time it should be get less and less dark. So you can see here noticeably already it's a lot less dark than the last patch. You can see how uh, there's a lot less concentration of, of powder residue. So I'm gonna keep running these patches down and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. So this should be the last patch I run down dry. It may have a little bit of residue, but uh, that should get taken care of by the oil which we run down the barrel next. So I'll come show you. So you can see here that anything left is negligible. So that to me is what I consider to be satisfactory with just running patches dry down the barrel. Now we're going to put oil on it. And actually I'll reuse this patch, it doesn't have any powder on it. So I'm going to take my rem oil, usually I'll spray a little bit down the barrel, and then I'll spray some on the patch as well. I'm going to do the same thing. And basically what this is going to do is help remove any rust that may be in the barrel. While well, powder comes up as black on the patch, rust will come up as brown. And you need oil in order to remove the rust. A dry patch won't do it. So you can see there's a little bit of brown. I'll come show. But that just means I've stored my musket in a uh, dry environment. Otherwise you risk getting rust even after you cleaned it. I'm actually going to flip these patches over, do the same thing. Oil is also going to help prevent rust down the road as well. And to me, that's honestly satisfactory. This is uh, cleaning from a small event, a one day event. But if we were to uh, be cleaning from maybe a full encampment where we did multiple battles a day, the amount of effort and time it would take would be a lot longer. So that's just a standard clean. Now the barrel is fully clean, it's dry, it's oiled. Now I'm going to run bore sealant down there. Again, I usually use what's called bore butter, but something like this works as well. See here, it's a much thicker consistency, almost like a raw honey. So I'll basically just take some of that and wipe it on the rag here, or the patch rather. run that down. Because I ran the, uh, the oil down prior, I'm only going to run it down once. Bring it back up. 
and uh, that should be good. So now this is a fully clean barrel. It's dry, it's been oiled, it's sealed. And uh, what reenactors do to make sure that nothing is left in their barrel is do what's called a ping of the musket. So I'll remove the worm here. Basically what I'm gonna do is put the ramrod in the barrel and throw it down. And if there's nothing left in the barrel, it should make a pinging sound. So you can hear that, I'll do it again. So if there was anything left in the barrel, there would not be a pin. Okay, so we now have a clean musket barrel. And what we're gonna do is remove the musket barrel now. So to remove the musket barrel, there are a series of pins that need to come out. So what I'm gonna do is raise the musket up on one of these tins here. And just a note, you're gonna see that there's a series of probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pins. However, not all of them are used to remove the barrel. Some of them are only to remove these tubes that hold the ramrod in place. I'll be removing all of them uh, because I want to show a full musket disassembly. But again, if you want to remove the barrel, only remove the ones that are for the barrel, not the ones that are behind the pins. So here we go. I'm going to take my uh, pin punch here, my hammer, and some of these can be actually pretty tricky to pull out. Put the uh, pin punch right on the pin and lightly tap. You don't want to damage the wood. Flip it over. And usually they uh, take a little bit of effort to pull out. This one came out relatively easily, but especially if they're not removed, often the, uh, the pins can take a little bit of effort to pull out. Go. All right, so sometimes they can get a little bit difficult to remove. Um, so in that case, I'm going to take my pliers and brace them against the wood, but I don't want to damage the wood, so. I'm gonna put a paper towel down. And there we go, that came out. Alrighty, and this is the last one. It's right in there. I don't think there are others. Alrighty. So first we're gonna remove these little tunnels here. You see they come right out. So now we're just going to remove the last screw that's holding the barrel in place. Alrighty, it's now off. See there is a little bit of rust under there. Now we're just going to set this off to the side. We're going to move on to the barrel. So I'm just going to go at it with just typical rem oil and some steel wool and see where that gets me. Just take a little piece here. Removing the barrel also gives you a great opportunity to polish your barrel. Um, as many reenactors know, when you go to polish your barrel, often the polish gets stuck in the cracks where it meets the uh, where it meets the musket stock. It's not critical that the underside of the barrel looks perfect, but I generally just like to get any rust out of there so it doesn't spread. Alrighty, though this barrel doesn't need it, I'm going to do a quick demonstration with the wire brush and the buffing wheel, just so you can see how it works. Alrighty, so the buffing wheel. 
Uh, this side obviously is the buffing side. Uh, this is gonna need a replacement probably uh, the last time I polished at least. Uh, once it gets black like this, uh, you're either gonna need to wash it or replace it. So first, um, I'm just gonna stick a little bit of polish. I'm gonna try and do this with only polish first. Just a little bit's necessary. I'll take a paper towel, spread it out. And safety glasses, always a must when you're using a buffing wheel. All right, and make sure that you have something you don't mind getting dirty below the buffing wheel. All right, so you can see that uh, definitely got a lot more polished, but I'm still, I've still got these uh, stains here that I want to get rid of. These are often caused by uh, polish that gets stuck at the crack between your musket barrel and stock and it just creates this stain here, which can get very hard to remove. And so for that, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the wire brush. I'll only be applying a very light pressure. Um, the wire brush can create scratches. Only a light pressure is needed for, for the job that I'm trying to do. So after only hitting the barrel with the wire brush for maybe a few minutes, you can see the results here. All the stains are basically gone. And anything that looks like it may still be a stain is most likely going to be removed when you go to polish it in just a second. Alrighty, so that is the buffing wheel and the wire brush. Again, totally not uh, necessary, but um, can be useful for cleaning up tougher messes. So again, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the moss. I prefer to use uh, paper towels for my polishing. So I'll dab some down the barrel here. Again, less is more. Alrighty, and uh, start wiping it off. You can really see that uh, a lot of the oxidization is coming off the metal as it gets polished. There's a little bit of uh, rust around the bayonet lug up here. So I'm just going to take my steel wool. I'll take a little tiny piece here. And just a little bit of rem oil. Spray that area. And get at it. And if this doesn't do a good enough job, I might hit it with the buffing wheel. But you can see that that rust all came off. Okay, so you can really see the shine that's starting to come from this polishing. I recommend that you rewind in the video actually to see the difference that the polish and the buffing made. Alrighty, so you can see this is one that I just finished and this is one that I have not polished yet. So you can really see the difference that under a minute of polishing made. All right, so that is a pretty clean and polished barrel. I'll set that off to the side for just a second here, and uh, we're gonna move on to the musket stock. So this musket stock actually does not really need any uh, linseed oil, which is what we use for this. So you can see how shiny this musket is. Um, that means that the wood is pretty well finished. Um, I'm gonna show uh, the application of linseed oil anyway today. I'm only gonna do a light layer, um, but if you have a musket that's in need of it more, you could add more and perhaps do one, two, even three coats of linseed oil. Open it up. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna take this applicator here and pour a little bit on. Just spread it evenly down the musket stalk. I'm gonna flip it onto its back side here. Flip it on top rather. 
Usually I'll, I'll reapply this uh, once a year. And again, this is in really good shape where I would do multiple coats, but today I'm only doing one. Alrighty. Get a little bit more here and do the other side. Wanna make sure that you have uh, a coat everywhere on the musket. This is gonna add a nice shine and depth to the musket as well as protecting it. Alrighty, so that's everything with uh, the linseed oil. And I'm just gonna take this and uh, put it up against a wall somewhere dry and leave it overnight. Alrighty, so it is now the next morning. We've allowed the linseed oil to settle in on my musket. And no matter if you put one coat or three coats on, usually you'll have a little bit of residue left over. But basically what I'm gonna do now is just take a paper towel and just wipe it down. You're gonna feel it's a little bit sticky and your goal is just to get that stickiness off of it. You can see some of the uh, residues coming off. It may continue to be a little bit sticky for a couple days after you finish, but that should go away as it finishes its drying process. This is just adding a sealant onto the musket. It's going to protect the wood, help it last longer. All right. So now the linseed oil process is done and we can reassemble the musket. So first we're going to put back on the barrel. It's pretty straightforward. Just fit it right in. Make sure that the uh, pegs line up in the pinholes here. And now I'm just gonna put it on its side and add the pins all back in. On most muskets, all the pins should be the same size with the exception of a couple that go down towards the base of the musket stock where the wood is thicker. So I'm just gonna reverse what I did yesterday. Just take my hammer. And uh, when I get towards the base, I'm just gonna take a paper towel or a rag to protect the wood from uh, getting damaged. And as we go down the line, I'll take my brass tunnels here and put them back in place. All right, so these pins can give you a hard time sometimes. Um, just don't force them. You can end up breaking the pins if you try to hit them and they're not actually getting through the uh, hole in especially the tunnel pieces. I'll show you that it's, it's really tight. I mean, that barely fits through. You have to get it exactly perfect for that to make it through. What I'd recommend is that you look at where that hole is situated and it's gonna, on this musket at least, it's a little closer to the left side here than it is to the right. So then you're gonna take your pin, hammer it through with no tunnel in place and look to see whether it falls towards the right or the left side of the slot that's for the um, bracket that holds the pin in place. So you can see here, this one is more towards the left side. So I'm gonna wanna insert the tunnel piece so that the little hole is more towards the left side. So I have to flip it, flip it around. And now when it goes in, it'll meet up with that pin piece. Now the last part of putting your barrel in is to make sure that screws in on the end. Now that the barrel is fully attached, all we need to do is to reattach the lock. It's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna take the lock and fit it in. Make sure your plate's on there. And you're going to take your two screws. So the longer and thinner screw is going to go in the front hole and the shorter and fatter screw is going to go in the top one up here. All right, now that the musket's all back together, 
All you need to do is do some polishing on the brass that we didn't polish earlier. The reason why we didn't do that was just because we had to uh, seal the stock and some of that oil can get onto the brass and tarnish the shine that you just did. So I like to wait until after I finish the uh, linseed oil process. Alrighty, so similar to everything else we've done so far, I just like to use moss, just a little bit, paper towel, dab it on there, and buff it clean. And I'll just do that for every brass piece and maybe give a once over even to the brass pieces that I have already polished. And I'll check in when the musk is totally complete. Alrighty, so that is a fully cleaned and polished musket. Not only did we clean the barrel and the lock, but we also removed the barrel and treated the wood on the stock as well. Please make sure that before storing a musket, take a little bit of oil, spray it on a rag or a paper towel, and wipe down any metal parts. This is gonna help prevent rust and corrosion when in storage. Furthermore, always remember to store your musket in a musket sock such as this. These musket socks also help prevent rust while in storage. And remember to always store your musket in a cool and dry environment. We thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please make sure to check out our channel for any more reenacting related content. And remember to always like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Musket barrel is now attached. It's now reattached. Reattached to to the stock. The stock. Yes. Musket barrel is now reattached <laughs> to the stock. Alrighty. So now the musket barrel is attached to the musk. I'm not laughing. You are. Three, two, one, go. All right. So now the musket barrel is back attached. <laughs> you keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, if you want to be done by five. It's well past five. This is it. none of this is my fault. Okay. You're right. not ready. Yes, I am ready. I am ready. I am don't ready. look over here. I don't know why you keep looking over here. Alright, ready? Let's get it done quick. Alright, so now <sighs> <laughs> You just you can't do it. You want me to get in there and do it? <laughs> The musket barrel is reattached to the lock. No. no. <laughs> to the stock. Lock stock. Just say the musket barrel is now reattached. You don't need to say the stock. I think that's yeah, inferred. Alright, right. right, the musket barrel is now reattached. All there's left to do is to attach the lock to the stock. <laughs> I'm sorry. It rocks like Dr. Sue. I managed to hold it until you finished it. Should, no, I should redo that. Ready?